All right, we're looking at a 2017 350EXCF, and we're looking at taking off the throttle body, and it's um, not as daunting as it might seem at first, but let's go through it step by step. Of course, to start with, you're going to need to make sure that the seat and tank are removed. Obviously, you'll want to make sure the bike is clean before you do that. Um, but uh, what I generally do is use that little plug that comes along with uh, your your toolkit that comes with the bike and make sure and get that get that into here and of course the other end I like to cover with a little plastic ziplock bag just to help just to help keep the dirt in at this stage it's worth mentioning that this series of KTM's uh, not just the EXCF models but uh, many other models use a grounding strap that goes to the subframe and it's very important that that strap does not interfere with where the seat base rests on that subframe. You can see the marks from where it sits and many uh, machines have this ground strap sitting right where the seat is rubbing against it. In fact, you can even see that this one has been compromised a bit that way. Anyway, you've got to make sure that your ground straps are well out of the way. Uh, obviously, we're going to disconnect the battery because anytime you're working on the electrical system and you got the fuel tank off, good idea to disconnect that battery. All right, now with the seat in the tank off, the trick is that the subframe needs to be uh, disconnected at the bottom, uh, loosened off at the top, because what we're going to be doing is pivoting it upwards after we loosen off the clamp to the throttle body, but so the whole apparatus will tilt upwards. And on this particular model, we want to minimize the amount of plastic that we have to remove to do that. Uh, so in this case, there are some shortcuts. The other thing is, uh, when I'm doing this kind of work, I generally like to pull the ECU when you're working, uh, disconnecting and connecting electrical devices. Nice to uh, not have to worry about static electricity uh, doing something nasty to that unit. Also pay attention when you're putting the unit back in that your cables are uh, routed nicely so that they're not getting pinched. Of course, you want to make sure that there's no cables or nothing interfering with the uh, rest of the seat base that sits in here. There are some models that will require you to take off more plastic, but at this particular case, this model only requires removing the muffler mounting bolts. The muffler doesn't even have to come off itself, and then the whole unit will tilt up. All right, so now we've got the subframe assembly loosened off. I've uh, loosened off the clamp that clamps the air boot into the throttle body intake. Uh, don't forget to loosen that guy off. And uh, now as we uh, lift up, I've also, I've also popped up the uh, uh, tip over switch just so as we tilt it up, it doesn't get smashed into the frame. And at this point, it's really just a matter of propping up the assembly to keep it from flopping down. So as you're tilting the subframe assembly up, uh, again, you've made sure that your clamp is loosened off so that the uh, air boot will come off. Um, you know, and pay attention to any wires that might be uh, tugged at or stressed as you're doing the tilting. You definitely don't want to be creating any problems. Uh, we'll just disconnect the breather hose that goes to the uh, air box. And now we need to remove this uh, engine mount bracket and that'll give us a little bit more access to the rest of the throttle body. And then of course loosen off the throttle body clamps on the boot attaching it to the intake of the engine. Uh, it's very very tight getting the throttle body out through here and taking that boot off of the throttle body is going to be necessary. Of course, disconnect any uh, connectors and wires that are kind of getting in the way. I've loosened off the clamps all the way, uh, far enough that the uh, screws aren't going to quite fall out yet. But uh, you're going to need every bit of slack in there that you, can, that you can get, because depending on how many years that rubber boot has been married to the aluminum of the throttle body, it could be a little stubborn getting off of there. Uh, the other thing too is that 
Uh, they've got a guard over the throttle position sensor and it's almost impossible to get the connector off without taking that guard off, but you can only get at one of the screws. So you might as well take that one out now. Once we rotate it, we'll be able to get at the other one to take the cover off and disconnect the connector. This is also a good time to disconnect the MAP sensor that's on top of the throttle body. Now that I've dislodged the throttle body, uh, I can now get at the uh, remaining screw that holds the cover on for the throttle position sensor. And the cover will kind of flip back and unhook. And of course, uh, We've got a push-pull set up so that you've got one cable pulling to give it throttle and in the event of some kind of a uh, failure you can at least back off the throttle and it'll close it. And uh, yeah, so we just have to disconnect that. It's really just a matter of loosing off with a 10mm uh, wrench the uh, bodies of the cable here and then the cables will unhook. So now that the outer cables are loosened off they'll just pop out of the body and it's just a matter of gently bringing the cables around so that you can pull the little retainers out. And that's what we have to do next. Yeah, a little tricky trying to do this uh, left, working left-handed and holding the GoPro at the same time, but you kind of get the idea here that, of course, you don't want to be hurting the cable in any way, but you just want to be making sure that you can get enough slack in it to pull it out. And there we go. Okay, and now with the uh, intake boot completely removed, the throttle body just slips right out, and there it is. Of course, reinstalling is the opposite, and just make sure that you do everything in the correct order. So once you've got the throttle body into position, make sure and get the connector back onto the, th the uh, throttle position sensor, and then get the cover screwed back on get her up into place and then you've got to hook your uh, throttle cables back on and get that cover back on and then of course you can get your boot back on get her right back on etc etc all right we're just at the stage now where we've pretty well got the throttle body all back in one of the trickiest parts of this whole task is getting the air boot from the air filter assembly hooked on to the throttle body and uh, what I recommend is of course loosening off the clamp a heck of a lot and sliding the clamp all the way back towards the air box until you can get the thing on and I find that as you as you swing the um, subframe into position kind of watch to see that it's reasonably well centered of course you've left these guys completely loose until you get that back one done they can be they can be tightened up afterwards but I find that that's the best method. Yeah, you have to kind of maybe struggle for a bit, but it shouldn't take more than a few minutes to get that guy on there. All right, if we're looking at the throttle position sensor of a throttle body from an EFI system, the position sensor is really nothing more than, in electronic terms, which is called a potentiometer. And all it is is a device that has a particular voltage coming into it and depending on kind of like the volume control on your stereo depending on where that's turned the output is a smaller or fraction of that voltage so I've got a bench power supply putting out a few volts it's not critical 5 volts is probably about typical for these and what I'm doing is I'm feeding it through a thousand ohm resistor because we want to restrict the amount of current that would be available if something were to were to go wrong in there we uh, we don't want to burn it out so uh, we're feeding that into the nearest pin the farthest pin is our common or our negative and the middle pin is the output of the position sensor so on an oscilloscope we can display voltage in terms of this particular line and how high it goes is showing the DC voltage coming out. 
So what we're looking to measure uh, in this potentiometer is, say, if dirt or wear got to the point where the little contact that sweeps around as you're twisting the throttle, uh, if dirt or some kind of fault occurs in there where you get a, an intermittent, say, connection, uh, you can get uh, a situation where the instead of the voltage gradually going up or down, you have maybe a sudden spike or jump in that. Uh, of course, an oscilloscope is pretty handy because you can kind of see it rather quickly if there was an issue. Uh, otherwise, definitely use an analog meter. An analog meter is the way to go because um, you get a more accurate representation of the change in voltage. If you use a digital meter, often uh, as the voltage is changing, the digital meter uh, kind of takes a while to catch up and sometimes will display um, almost gibberish where you, you really can't trust what you're seeing. Is it, is it an intermittent connection or is it uh, something with the, with the meter? So definitely use an analog meter or in this particular case the oscilloscope is definitely the way to go. And so you can see there's a little bit of bounce there as it snaps, as the throttle snaps closed. But uh, other than that, the transition from zero to full throttle is nice and steady. There's no jumping around. So in this particular case, our throttle position sensor is good.